Captain Rome. You are summoned before this board of inquiry. Uh, Admiral Presnell, Solak, and Thant presiding. Uh, this inquisition is to determine your capacity to continue command after being joined with a Trill symbiont. It's highly unusual for a Denobulant and a Trill to be. We will let you make an opening statement and then we will proceed with our questions. I, De Caron, stand before you, Captain in Starfleet, Captain of the USS Rangin formerly under Captain Aiden Loch. The PLR-4, when the Phnom Penh plague had been wreaking havoc throughout the, the colony, the Trill colony had been cultivating new, new methods of terraforming different pockets around the world. And unfortunately, when they encountered some native life it wreaked havoc with their systems and eventually broke out and infected all trill on the world our crew beamed down there was about a dozen of us there was just chaos around the people could not handle such a proliferant disease something that Trill are normally quite sensitive to to begin with, given the delicate nature between host and symbiont. Now, the majority of the Trill on the planet were indeed joined. And this was not fortunate for them, because this plague, it had some unfortunate side effects of affecting synaptic links, which of course, would break the connection, albeit intermittently, between the symbiont and the host. And as this was something that was far beyond our measures of dealing with, it was something we'd never seen before. It was just a matter of damage control. We had to go through the motions of just watching everyone die and trying to make them as comfortable as possible because there was very little we could do. As a last-ditch effort, myself, Lieutenant Karn, and Ensign Reblar took it upon ourselves to try to rescue the last three symbiont hosts, the last three symbionts alive. We went through some rather quick and dirty procedures to remove the symbionts and place them within ourselves. We had some help. Unfortunately, there weren't many, as a number of the crew were elsewhere at the time. I actually had to perform the procedure on myself. And while it was challenging, I did rise to the occasion because it was do or die. And I wasn't about to let them die without trying. Roan was the symbiont that I had come to. Pardon me. It's a rather emotional time going through the experiences of both is and is not your own. I'm still getting used to the duality of mind. I am told that with many trill that join, they tend to fuse more into one personality bonded between the two becoming a new, unique life form. And I'm finding that the case with Roan and myself, we tend to stand beside each other, not as one, but as two. And over the last number of weeks, we found a bit of harmony. There's so much information, so much memory I don't find it overwhelming so much as stimulating to just go through different experiences. And when I allow myself time, it can be quite distracting. But fortunately, through Roan's experiences, 
he's able to give me control in such that I can set them aside and it trickles it through to me as I need them. It's a support unlike I've ever felt before. Coming from a world like Denovula, with large families, with huge communities that are deeply interconnected, it's a refreshing take because you can't get any more connected than to be a host to a symbiont, especially one as wonderful as Rome. Once we were finally rescued, brought up from the planet, all Trill, all the hosts were dead. Only the three of us remained. And unfortunately, our Klingon officer and symbiont did not survive. Reblar was able to bring the symbiont to Trill before they had to separate. Still, still in intensive care. I don't know if he'll pull through. But it was interesting. Within moments of, of joining with Roan, it was like a whole new world opened up to me. I was able to see not only Roan's past, but my own. To find new goals. To push forward. And af after everything I've been through, gaining command of the Ranjan, losing my mentor, Captain Loch, I can't help but think that this journey, this quest for discovery that we're going on, needs people committed to fight and learn and grow. And I can't think of a better place for me to do my part than on the bridge of a starship. If you'll have me. <clears throat> the uh, Vulcan Admiral uh, tilts his head and raises his eyebrow with something of an impressed look. <clears throat> so the Teller Admiral just sits there for a second, hand on his mouth, thinking, and looks at Dakar. Just you say that one of the three of you separated at on trail successfully. Pardon? Yes. One of you separated on trail successfully. Yes. Why didn't you? Why did you stay bound, bonded to, to one of those symbionts? Yes. Well, the doctors present on the ship transporting us back to the Trill homeworld could not separate us without killing us both. For some reason, my unique Denobulan physiology and that of the Trill symbiont bonded in such a way that they could not find a safe way to, to separate us. That and Ron and I, if given the option, and we wish to exercise that option as sentient beings, we do not wish to be separated, even if a way is found. It's a bit of an undiscovered country of our own. We want to see it through. Captain, I'm no doctor, and I won't pretend to be a doctor. Uh, my concern is one of the, un the unknown. It, you, I grant you that this is a scientific well, miracle, for lack of a better term. Indeed. My concern is in your well-being and if you are capable to lead a starship because the last thing 
any of us want is for the captain of a starship to not be at their best and to cause problems for their crew. I, I think all of us, as Admiral Presnell looks around at his fellow admirals, can agree that the safety and the security of a crew has to be paramount. The loss of life is unfortunate, and it is good to see that you are alive. Thank you, sir. Um, but what we have to get to the bottom of is whether or not you, well, frankly, whether or not you are fit to be on a starship and be in charge of a starship at this point. Indeed, you admitted to yourself that you are having problems integrating with the Ron entity. I did not express it as difficulty or problem. It was merely a different synthesis between the two of us. It is unique, but being different than the norm is not necessarily a problem. I see it as an opportunity. It can be a problem if it interferes with your thinking, with your decision-making, especially in the heat of battle or the heat of any mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. How do we know that you're not affected in such a way? I would be lying if I said I was not affected in, in some way. But I think of it more like having an intimate connection connection with my own internal number one, my own XO. Someone who can question my own thoughts to a point of, are you sure this is the right course of action? Here are some experiential points to consider. And the fortunate thing is it happens at a much greater speed than any human vocal conversation could ever achieve. That hurts right here, just so you know. Right in my heart. Keep that ensign out of here. <laughs> it's just a random person. Uh, Empathy, man. I feel it. All right, I'm leaving. Back to my quiet. So, Captain, are, are you capable of making a split decision? Or are you weighing every decision that you make with the Roan symbiote? I would have to say yes to both. A captain on the bridge of a starship must always weigh decisions. What time is available to make such decisions is something that happens in the heat of the moment. Something that must be determined by necessity. If something comes up that needs an immediate reaction... That reaction will come from me, Descartes Ron. I am one being with two minds, but do not forget and do not believe otherwise that I am one being. Captain Roan, says the Vulcan Admiral, at this juncture, I believe that a practical question or a practical demonstration may be in order. I will submit to you the following question. You are traveling with a balanced warp field towards Earth's space dock, closely following a subspace eddy, and with Dover singularity at bearing 000.0, .0 range 2 astronomical units. The eddy veers to 090.0, .0, generating the requisite warp field fluctuation. What do you do, sir? That is something that I would generally leave up to my pilot. A skilled that... crew. They belong in their positions. I trust that their reaction times and their experiences are sufficient. In this circumstance, assume that the bridge crew is looking to you for guidance. In a situation such as this, if the pilot is incapable of making those split decisions, they're the ones that should be in an inquiry, not myself. Fascinating. 
I, if I was at the helm, that would be a different story. But that is not the point of why I am here, is it? The Admiral Presnell whispers to the Vulcan, says, he does make a good point. That gets an eyebrow raise and a head tilt. Um, Captain, I have a proposition for you, and this is unprecedented, but I think the Vulcan brought up a good point for, in my mind. A practical demonstration is necessary. Mm -hmm. I propose that you retake the Kobayashi Maru. That are my thoughts exactly, Admiral. I'd, Interesting. I'd like to I too would. Go ahead. I too would be interested to see the results of such an endeavor. And trust me, I won't be pulling a Kirk on this one. Are you implying that you pulled a Kirk the first time around, Captain? I am not. Just. This is a rather serious situation. With serious, with serious implications. It is not simply being the voice on a bridge. There are many lives on the line. Every single crew member on my ship and every single being that I encounter while in command. So I take this very seriously. No cavalier attitude. Well said. Admiral Thant, your thoughts? Well, <clears throat> well, I do not completely disregard a Denobulin, Denobulin as a captain, as a, Denobulin having the skills to be a captain. I am troubled by this joining. The Trill have always been less than completely trustworthy in my mind. But the Kobe Mashi Maru would be a somewhat satisfactory look into his into the captain's current functioning state. I'm not opposed to this completely. Well, then I believe that this is the first thing the three of us have agreed upon in quite some time. Uh, I disagree with that, but fine. <laughs> Admiral, I... your prejudice in these matters is quite illogical. I uh, throw my hands up. Um, Captain Kobayashi Maru tests tomorrow morning, 0800, holodeck 6. Uh, We'll see you there. Aye. You're dismissed. I am dismissed. <laughs>